my question for you is I want you to think about all the ways that you have in your house and around you to make music. How many things do you have that will make music, reproduce music, make music? Okay, how many of you have between one and five? That's just about everybody, isn't it? Okay. How about between five and ten? Don't forget car radios, computers. Okay, you need the radios that you have in the house. So, how many between five and ten now? <coughs> That's probably pretty much all of you. And uh, how about between ten and fifteen? <coughs> Take a look around. Take a look around. And how many of you also remembered to include your voice? The very first music, musical instrument that we ever had is our voice. Don't you think it's strange that we have to have music wherever we go, 24-7? I mean, it's on the elevators, it's on our phones. We can't almost escape it. So I want to know from you, how are you using the music? Why do you have to have between 10 and 15 ways to make music. Just shout it out. It helps relax. Helps focus. <laughs> Keeps life from being boring. <laughs> it's what? Convenient. Mm -hmm. It's definitely convenient. Anything else besides? You listen to music for security. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay, I had never thought of that one. Thank you, thank you, yes. Okay, then there's another one for your pets. The music that you were listening to prior to this was from a CD called To Call Your Mutt. And yes, there is a lot of research with regards to music for your animals. And the bottom line that they have found, and this is through dog kennels and study in London and in California, dogs love classical music more than any other type, and they like it played on the piano. Who would have figured? <laughs> so, anything else that we have forgotten? Change a mood, absolutely. Go from being down in the dumps to being, or waking up for the day, absolutely. Meditation, yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And we're going to see um, as we go along here, there's nothing that music and sound can't do for you. And that's why we have to have so many opportunities and ways to have the music with it. And the things that we're talking about is not music therapy. So we need to get these definitions down right away. Everything you've been doing for yourself, everything that you've been doing for your friends or for your patients is called a music intervention or using music as therapy. And I'll get into some distinctions in just a minute. But I want to share with you a clip about um, a sociologist who came into a... Um, nursing home, and he noticed that there were so many of the residents who just sat all day long, didn't communicate, were in their own worlds, and he had the idea, because we have this amazing technology today, to bring in an iPod with the patient's favorite music on it and headphones, and watch what happens. What do you think of music? My heart belongs to music. I, I love it. Have you ever had music just hit you in a place that immediately brought you to tears? Music has that power. Music connects people with who they have been, who they are, and their lives. Because what happens when you get old is all the things you're familiar with and your identity are all just being peeled away. We're going to do your medicine.
medicine now, right? healthcare system imagines the human to be a very complicated machine. We have medicines that can adjust the dials. Blood pressure, oh, turn that down. Blood sugar, oh, turn that down. We haven't done anything to touch the heart and soul of a patient. One resident that barely opened her eyes, she didn't respond. Knew her for two years, once we put the iPod on her. She started shaking her feet. She started moving her head. It was amazing. Music has more ability to activate more parts of the brain than any other stimulus. Who am I? Huh? Who am I? I'm your daughter. By exciting or awakening those pathways, we have a gateway to stimulate and reach somebody who otherwise is unreachable. <laughs> it can't get away from me if I'm in this place. It takes me back to my school days. Oh, God, that's, that's beautiful. Does yeah. it make you happy to sing for us? Yeah. I'm crying. Every human being needs stimulation from the outside, from little babies to old people. American culture is wrong. There is actually life beyond adulthood. There's the opportunity to live and grow and become elders. The aging that we experience holds in it very important learnings and lessons. There is no pill that does that. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you so much. Okay, so there's a tears of joy. Yeah. I thought you were going to grow wings. I was trying. <laughs> <laughs> Hard not to smile. Yeah. It touches us in so many different ways. What we just looked at was first, it touches our emotions. And I think that's what you normally, the response that you have to music, isn't it? I like it, I don't like it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. But it can do so much. Like it can reduce the depression. It can reduce anxiety reduce anger and what you're listening to now this is a very precise music composition with various underlying sounds in it to reduce symptoms of PTSD it's been very effective at decreasing the hallucinations and the high anxiety and the hypervigilance that is associated with PTSD You also saw on that clip that music can really touch the spiritual part of us. And from my perspective as a psychologist, that's the most important part of us. Increase feelings of well-being and connect to a higher power. Instill a sense of peace and assist in the final breath in releasing. And someone here also mentioned it helped with focus. Yes. There are certain specific pieces of music that really help us focus more than other pieces. So focus and concentration. This particular piece is exceptionally good for that. It's called Remembrance. And when played in classrooms with children who have behavioral issues and issues of not being able to focus, they're able to sit down and actually get into their work and accomplish things. And if the teacher forgets to put it on, they go over and put it on because they can feel the difference. So it also helps with the attention and with memory. Know any populations where that might help? Yes. So looking at a grand chart here of how music affects us, all four parts of us, you all know about emotions. You do that so beautifully by yourselves. But do you realize that if something is affecting you emotionally, there is also a physiological response going on in your body? You can't separate it out. Something is also changing physiologically. And I'll talk a little bit more in depth about that in a minute. In your mind and your spirit. And what's so interesting about the world today is that we think we're the first ones to have discovered all this. 
And yet, every single population on our planet, every single culture has used music and sound. They've given it a place of honor, and it was considered a religious and a moral force. In ancient Greece, you had to study music, mathematics, and science, all three. If you wanted to be a doctor, you had to study all three. I imagine you haven't um, heard from your doctor that, remember Hippocrates, father of medicine, used to send all of his cases to the temple of Asclepius for music therapy. So it's ancient, ancient, ancient. And we're just coming back to rediscovering all of this wonderful ancient knowledge. For instance, they knew that specific instruments playing specific notes would have specific changes in your physiology. And they didn't have all the technology we have today. Well, what is this thing called music that can do so much and that we spend so much money on? Well, I went to the dictionary. It's the art of organizing sound to elicit an aesthetic response in the listener. It's sound. And what happens in your brain when you listen to this organized sound? So we have a piece of music playing. It first comes through all of your magnetic, electromagnetic fields out here before you even get to your ears. But then once it gets to your ears and goes into your brain, Look at all the various places that it touches. It touches but the motor sensory, the central part of us, the nucleus accumbens, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, which is vision, language, movement, memory, all of those parts of the brain light up when you were listening to that piece of music. Is it any wonder, then, that it has such a great effect on us? A company in Denmark called Musicure set out to specifically compose music for healing environments. And their goal was the music was to have a physically soothing and relaxing effect. It was also to stimulate the mind in a positive way creating experiences, and here's something really important, inner images. So it's not just hearing it and we get relaxed, but it's stimulating some imagery. So it's getting more of us involved than just, oh, that's pleasant. They have about 10 CDs now, and they're used in hospitals all over Europe. <coughs> And when they use it specifically with patients, this is what they have found. Significant documentation that the music is soothing and calming. Less use of pain relief medicine like morphine and sleeping medications. Reduced production of cortisol. Increased production of oxytocin, which makes you feel good. Reduced feelings of anxiety, stress and pain, and generally a more positive positive experience of treatment and hospitalization. I've been working with a hospital in Detroit. They now have this music piped all over the hospital. And the people, can you imagine now, you remember that most of the time, nobody wants to be in a hospital. And so when somebody opens that front door to come in and they hear this, what's that message? that the music is giving you. Calm. You are in a safe place. You are in a healing environment. You're going to be taken care of. Almost hate to turn it off, huh? So all of those things that we've just been talking about, things that you do for yourself, things that you do for others, are called music interventions or using music as therapy. Okay? 
Well, the next category that people loosely throw out when they're using music is music therapy. And the definition of music therapy is the clinical and evidence-based to accomplish individualized goals with a therapeutic relationship by a credentialed professional who has completed an approved music therapy program. So in other words, music therapy is only done by somebody who has a degree in music therapy, and they're very touchy about this. <laughs> so, just to educate you. Their goals of music therapy are quite extensive, and they have a background in psychology and music to communication, to improve behaviors, to reduce depression, reduce trauma and fears, to improve motor skills, to improve social skills, to support group facilitation. It's a social outlet for patients in long-term care and support for families of terminally ill patients. So it's a quite extensive list of what they're trained to do. So we have music interventions. Now you know what music therapy is, technically. Come to the third one, which is what I do. When I f I've been a musician my entire life, and I really wanted to work with people in a hospital. In the time when I wanted to do this, music therapy was not going in that direction. They were still in institutions and um, would not even entertain going into hospitals. So, and they also were not uh, insurance reimbursable. So I got my doctorate in psychology, which allowed me to go into hospitals, so I could focus on this category, which wasn't even one then at that time, which is music medicine. Music medicine is the very intentional use of very specific music or sounds to affect a change in physiology or emotions and the transpersonal. This means that we can use specific music, specific sounds, to increase all of these things. And so here's where you have to go, really? Music and sound can do all this? Yes. You have to switch your thinking that we're not just chemistry, we're also energy. And music and sound is energy. So essentially what we're doing when we listen to something, is we're taking energy medicine by ear. And so all of you have been doing this, self-medicating yourself for decades, haven't you? <laughs> but with music medicine, we're doing it very, very intentionally. We can also decrease all of these things with specific music and sounds. And there are no side effects. That's even better. And to top it off, most of the time, it's very pleasant. But not always. Not always. But it won't be anything like the side effects that you take from medications. Nothing. So physically, just as an example, some of those things like reducing tension, reducing pain. This particular piece of music has been found extremely effective at reducing pain, chronic pain. I worked in a chronic pain clinic for a number of years, and I saw this article in the Journal of Music Therapy. And they had used five different pieces of music to reduce pain levels in people with chronic pain. They used a piece by Debussy, so that's classical music. They used jazz. They used rock and roll. They used patient choice, and they used this, minimalist music. So I read the article, and when it came to the fact that it was minimalist music that made the most different, I just couldn't believe it. I'm a classical musician, and there's just no way. So I went to the library. You know, I'm, I'm keeping an open mind. I went to the library. This is before wonderful internet. Um, found this particular piece of music, put it on, put on my headphones, and I said, give it a chance. 
And before long, the lights in the library were blinking on and off. I had sat there for 25 minutes and didn't know it, and the library was closing. And when I got up and was packing up my things, I had no more pain in my neck and shoulders than I usually carried. I thought, ha, there must be something to this. So I put together a, a CD program for the population that I was working with and had them use it. And it does make a difference. Now, from the logical minds of where you are sitting right now and listening, no, you would not choose this to listen to for fun. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about using these specific sounds in those specific patterns for a specific reason, which is to decrease pain. We can use it for specific diseases, like um, Alzheimer's, like arthritis, like Parkinson's. Joyful music in a study increases brachial artery flow. That's the artery that goes right in here, and it's very, very important to have that open so you don't have a heart attack. Joyful music increased that artery flow 26%. It was the same as if you were doing aerobic activity or taking a statin, and certainly a lot more fun. <laughs> you can cancel your membership to the gym. <laughs> Let me give you uh, an idea about using surgery. And this is actually what I did my dissertation on, sending people through surgery with specific music, pro programmed music. So instead of drugging your system more than you really, really need, you have your headphones on, listening to this before you even go down to surgery. And they have found your heart rate will normally go down. Your stress hormone levels go down, your respiration rates go down, your anxiety goes down, as much as taking the drug diazepam. Much better than laying there thinking all the thoughts you could think of before going into surgery. A system that I then later changed into actually used um, something different. Let me get to a minute. Um, during surgery, yes, you would have your own headphones on. The surgical team needs their own music for keep them mentally focused, but you need something totally different. You need to stay in the zone of relaxation so that your body evens out and balances and can accept what's going on. So when you do that, your blood pressure goes down, heart rate, stress hormone levels, respiration, muscle tension, pain meds, need for pain meds goes way down, and the amount of anesthesia needed. Nausea and vomiting go way down, dizziness, your hospital stays much shorter, and there's a 50% increase in growth hormone, which is good for your recovery. So the system that I now have changed into is one that has both specific sounds in it and a guided meditation. Because I'm finding that the combination of guided meditation and the right sounds and frequencies are much more powerful than either one of them by themselves. Because you are enlisting your inner healer to help instead of just going, fix me. So this is what it sounds like for in surgery. And it goes on and on. And if I had a lot more time, I could tell you some fabulous stories, people using this system. 
post surgery we find decreases in body movements verbal pain report struggling in delirium and in very improved facial expressions the psycho physiological decreases our anxiety pain sedative use goes way down a lot of increased relaxation and there's a lot more psychological satisfaction with the experience than just being drugged. Now there's a, uh, a composer in Holland, his name is Peter Heubner, and he began composing music for his friends because they had particular ailments and they asked him and um, what interesting thing happened was they began to get better by listening to his music. And in Germany, the doctors, uh, when they asked the patients, what are you doing? They said, we're listening to Peter's music. And they said, I want to meet Peter. And they began to approach him and ask him, well, you've had such good results with this music that you made for, let's say, cardiology. Would you make one for um, hormone issues? Would you make one for Parkinson's? And he said, I'll do it on one condition. Takes me months, sometimes years, to make these compositions. He says, I will do that if you will do the research and show that this is effective before you put it out there. So they agreed to do that. This is the list now of all of the preparation, musical preparations that he has made and that has scientific research behind showing that it's effective. Now what's so interesting that followed from that is, in Germany, these are only sold in pharmacies, 26,000 pharmacies. They are prescribed by the physicians, and insurance pays for it because they have a law that says, if you have anything that works as good as a uh, pharmaceutical, the insurance has to pay for it. Wow. <laughs> exactly. Here's an example of the one that's um, for cardiovascular. Each one of these preparations sounds totally different. Some of them have 400 tracks simultaneously. And they're very prescriptive. You need to listen to it at least twice a day for 20 minutes at a time. And you need to listen to it for 40 days in a row. And if you miss a day, you have to start over. <laughs> so I purchased some of these and did a study with Americans. And out of the 70-some people who signed up to be part of the study, only 12 completed. Because they couldn't do the 40 days in a row, which I found very interesting. So we go back to what is music, because I'm really interested in that fifth word, sound. How many of you are familiar with some of the sound therapies that are going on today? What are you thinking of? Okay, I think you're thinking things like ultrasound and ultrasonography. These are sounds we can't hear, that's why they're called ultra, but they are a sound wave, okay? So all these things sound can do, they're just really, really high pitched, okay? It's not music. Ultrasonography, you're familiar with that. And I want to tell you and remind you that every single person in this room has had sound therapy every single person. Can you figure out when that was? And you all had it at the same time. Say it louder. Exactly. In the womb. That was the first time we had all that sound. Absolutely. We start hearing at 16 weeks and this is what we hear. 
and it's with us that entire time. That's our first introduction to sound therapy. And we know that when um, babies are born prematurely, they have not had their full dose of these sounds. So a uh, colleague and I put together a program specifically for babies, one of which is for premature babies. And a hospital in Connecticut picked it up and did a study with it. The babies listened to a particular program I'll tell you about in a minute, three times a day. They had a little strip with speakers in it inside the incubator, the isolette, so that they could hear it. They had increased oxygen saturation levels, faster gain, longer quiet periods of time, and got out of the hospital much faster. On the CD, were things like the interuterine sounds, the mother's heartbeat, a very specific frequency to encourage growth. You can almost hear it there. And a beautiful music that was specifically composed for it, and a welcome message to the baby. So this would be the music part. Very gentle. The program's about 30 minutes. Post-surgery, this little guy had been flown to Massachusetts from Alaska for open heart surgery. And we sent him a little speaker down here. And in the iPod, it was loaded um, our chakra program. We now use pillow strips. The doctors were absolutely astounded at how quickly this baby healed. So it's for any age, isn't it? Speaking of those pillow strips, I do need to take a little sidetrack here and talk to you about how are you going to get your music medicine. The one way we do not want you to get it is through earbuds. So please throw them away. What happens is unconsciously we have a tendency, because it's in our ear and nothing's closing out external sound, unconsciously we're turning it up higher than normal. And there are several studies now showing that people who use earbuds all the time have decreased hearing loss. So if you want to really put some uh, interesting and growth stock in your portfolios, hearing aid companies. <laughs> We're all going to be on it. These are wonderful bands that have speakers in them that go right over your ears. Um, this is a very inexpensive but excellent quality headphone. It has a little um, volume control in the line. It's about $19 online. The pillows with speakers in them, and pillow speaker strips that just slide right into your pillow. Uh, this is um, another way you could get your sounds, and this is true. This is a toilet. And what's so interesting about this toilet is they have a built-in music player and presets for each listener. <laughs> I mean, it's gotten to be quite the obsession, hasn't it, that you have to have music wherever you go? This is really the best way to get your music medicine, which actually goes back to how we got it in the womb through our entire body. This is called vibroacoustics therapy. These cushions, chairs, um, beanbag configuration up there all have a specific kind of speaker in it called a transducer. It translates the electrical energy from the CD or whatever into vibration. It is incredibly pleasant. The first one I had was a mat, and it, it, I mean, it did a good job. The only problem was nobody wanted to get off it. And so then I got a recliner so I could <laughs> get people up and out. 
Vibrotactile stimulation. Now, the National Institutes of Health has done a study using vibroacoustic therapy, and they have found in one session, one 30-minute session, more than 50% decrease in tension, just about 50% in fatigue, pain went way down, headache, depression, nausea, and other. One 30-minute session, approximately 50% in all those categories. Aside from nobody wanted to leave it. <laughs> oh. Vibroacoustic therapy post-surgery on infants. They had a little pad in the isolate for premature infants. They spent more time in a well-oxygenated state, less time in a highly agitated state, and longer periods of time in a quiet, alert state. And just briefly, well, how come this works so well? It's because our brain stem, over one-third of it is devoted to tactile stimulation. Is there any reason why we love to get massages, we love being hugged and touched? Because one-third of our brain is devoted to that. So you combine that with the audio, pretty good. Vibroacoustic therapy, now we get into the specific sounds, and you have to remember we're more than just molecules. We are energy. Vibroacoustic therapy takes pulsed, low-frequency tones, and you play it through the bed or the chair. You can listen to it through headphones. Sometimes it can be combined with music or nature sounds. Let's see if I can get this to play. OK. What you're listening to is 40 hertz. That's a specific uh, frequency, and it has been found effective with children with autism. It helps your digestive system. It helps with insomnia, reduction of blood pressure, circulation deficiency, and stress-induced depression. That's not all. It also can reinforce the thalamus, it's a potential intervention for stroke and Alzheimer's, for a wide range of anxiety. Just that one tone. So specific. For Parkinson's, this is a program that's been found effective, and it does have, amongst other frequencies, the 40 hertz in it. This is composed specifically for Parkinson's. And just very quickly, what is sound? We know what music is. Music is organizing these sounds. But what is sound? Very simply, because we don't have a whole semester, it's energy. Sound is energy couple of fun facts. Sound travels four and a half times faster through water than air. We are 70 to 80 percent water. Sound travels fastest through dense objects. Travels the fastest through a diamond. We got lots of bones. It will travel through your bones. <coughs> but human beings are matter. So how can that work? Ha. Max Planck, physicist who got a Nobel Prize, said, in reality, there's no such thing as matter. Each and everything is composed of oscillation or vibration. So therefore, we're energy. Sound is energy. We're energy. It makes perfect sense to use sound then, doesn't it? So as a wrap-up, we can use sound and music specifically to change emotions, our mind, affect our body, and to touch your soul. So I'm going to leave you with a couple of sound thoughts. Saint-Georges, physician from Russia, who was a Nobel Prize winner, said, treating humans without the concept of energy is treating dead matter. Whoops. See if I can get that one to back up. Nope. Sorry. 
sometimes computers have a mind of their own. Have you noticed? Okay. Future medicine will be based on energy. Every sickness is a musical problem. The healing, therefore, is a musical resolution. The shorter the resolution, the greater the musical talent of the doctor. What we're looking for is harmony throughout ourselves, aren't we? So, this particular piece called Angel Paradise is a fabulous one for Alzheimer's. And at this time, I'll take a few questions. Yes? It works. Um, I, I sent tape players through surgery. I've sent CD players through surgery. We alcohol swipe them. We put them in plastic bags. And uh, headphones are all wiped down. You can. You can. And you tell your doctor. And if you need um, all the body of research, let me know and I'll send it to you. I worked with uh, two sets of surgeons at different times. And all of their patients were noticeable because they had fewer complications and they were out, the out of the hospital faster. It's amazing. Other questions? Yeah. I do. I do. I'm in Walland, so it's close by. The last two tables over here have a lot of information about uh, my practice, about some CDs that I've made, and lots of propaganda. Other questions? That's a good question. Thank you. If you remember that we're talking about medicine by ear, everyone will have their own dosage. Okay. And it would be, in, if it's chronic, your dosage is going to be a lot wider and a lot more intense than if it's just a, something that you had since last week. If that makes sense. So, but usually, usually, you know, we can say 30 minutes, three, four times a day. If it's something really chronic, do it more. Exactly. No, no, no. It's those are just suggestions. Take one. They're just suggestions. No, no, no. It's for the whole series, but you don't have to listen to them all at once. You can listen to this one this week. Listen to that one that week. Sometimes you want to do two but each CD has its dosage on the back. Yes, yeah. There are some medications you don't want to take with other medications, and so you do. You want to leave space. Yeah. And a lot of these CDs you can listen to, you know, while you're reading. We don't suggest in the car because the engine vibration oftentimes will interfere with the vibration that's in the program or make you so relaxed that... Anything else? Well, thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. I really appreciate it. Thank you.